My husband and I paid off over $50,000 in debt on a single modest salary. We thought it would take us about two years, but it actually took us about eight. We still got there eventually, but it was a hard road, and I think it would have been a little easier if we'd been smarter about it. So today, I'm gonna to share with you the seven things I wish we had known before we started working to pay off our debt. Number one is you need a reasonable emergency fund before you get started. When we started working on paying off our debt, we were a family of three plus a dog and we owned a house and two cars. You know what happens when you have three people, a dog, a house and two cars? Oh, just a broken tie rod, a clothes washer that stops while the baby has a stomach bug, a shower handle that breaks off in the only bathroom in the house, a dog that needs a vet because she ate an ant trap, and a finger slammed in a door that requires stitches in the emergency room. I, I mean, not that I know of anyone that had all those things happen. <laughs> we stupidly only had $1,000 in the bank to cover any emergencies. That was not even close to enough to cover everything the universe threw at us. It was like standing outside with a tiny umbrella during a hurricane. Number two, if you don't have a plan for your next car, you will end up back in debt. When we started paying down our debt, we actually had two car loans. We attacked it by paying off one of the loans quickly and then selling both cars. Then we used the proceeds to buy much cheaper junker cars. This actually worked out great because we quickly went from two car loans to no car loans. The two cars we drove were old, but they were fine. The problem with old cars though, is that you have to realize you're on borrowed time. They will eventually fail. One of ours had the transmission fail and the repair was just too expensive. The other one actually had a fire inside the dash and it filled up with smoke. It wasn't quite as dramatic as a movie car fire, but it was definitely scary. <laughs> Both times our cars died, we ended up buying new cars with loans because we couldn't buy a running car with our little $1,000 emergency fund. This is the main reason we ended up taking so long to get out of debt. We kept ending up back in debt for cars. Unless you can live without one of your cars, you need to have an emergency fund big enough to buy a cheap car or accept that you may have to get another car loan along the way. And I don't personally think car loans are always a bad thing, but we can talk about that in another video. Number three, student loan debt is real debt. <laughs> we had about $20,000 in student loan debt remaining when we started getting serious about paying off our debt. And we wavered about whether we should try to pay it off early or just continue with the minimum payments. We had heard all the things about how student loan debt is good debt and that the student loan interest deduction would help on our taxes. Spoiler alert, student loan debt is still debt. And who cares if a student loan helps your taxes if it costs you a ton of interest and it's stressing you out. It was such a relief when we sent in that final student loan payment. And I'm so glad we're not still paying on our own loans while we're getting closer to sending our kids to college. Bye, honey. Have fun at college. Oh, can you drop off my loan payment when you're dropping off yours? Thanks. Number four, living on a budget that is too tight won't work. If you want to pay off debt, you're going to have to cut your budget to find money to throw at the debt. But if your budget is too tight, you're going to get frustrated and give up or feel resentful. Just like the pants that you wear to Thanksgiving dinner, your budget has to have a little breathing room. <laughs> when I'm looking at extras in my budget, I look at the value of fun I'm going to get for the dollar. For example, going on dates with my husband has always been a priority for me, but we found that a $20 dinner date brought us almost as much joy as a $100 dinner date. The first $20 brought us lots of joy because we were spending time together and eating a meal that we did not have to cook ourselves. The other $80 brought us just a little bit more joy due to, you know, delicious steak. <laughs> or sometimes there's a free alternative to get the same joy. For example, a day at an amusement park with my family is a fun time, but it costs over $200. But a day at a free local festival is also nice family fun but maybe not quite as thrilling as the roller coasters, but it's still a fun family memory. Number five, bad things will happen that get in the way of your debt payoff plan. After the last couple years that we've all had, I don't think I need to tell anyone that <laughs> happens. The lesson here is just to expect it and plan for it the best you can. Have an emergency fund and have all the proper insurance you need to get through the rough spots. Number six, unexpected good things will also happen along the way. When you're focusing on your debt payoff plan, not everything will be terrible. In fact, sometimes you'll get amazing surprises just when you least expect them. During our time paying off our debt, my husband got promoted and got a big raise. 
We kept living on the same Thanksgiving pants style budget and we put every dollar from his raise towards our debt. Our progress went a lot faster at that point. That was totally unexpected, but totally welcome. Number seven, paying off debt is a question of math and psychology. If you look at the math, you can definitely make the argument that you should be investing your money instead of paying off your debt if the interest is low. But the feeling of finally paying off your debt is so freeing. Being able to stop having your past drag you down so you can focus on your future is an amazing feeling. And I am not against all debt, but I know what it feels like to feel like debt is stopping you from getting where you want to be in life. And it's literally all you can think about. If that's where you are, you know what you need to do. Make a plan, start working on it, know that you will get knocked down, plan to stand up again, and just keep going. You can do this, and I would love to cheer you on along the way. Please subscribe, and we'll do this together.